Hello everyone, it's Lars here from Unicorn Reviews and today we're looking at Inno 3D's GeForce GTX 960. So 960 is below the 970 but it still uses the same architecture, just you know a new chip, the GM206. Uh, basically it comes with 2 gigabytes of VRAM, 2 actual gigabytes, not 1.5 plus a half. Uh, only a 128 bit bus, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem because it's you know GDDR, GDDR5 running at 7 GHz. When you see the overclocking results, you'll see what sort of crazy memory speeds we can get with this. Uh, it also advertises some overclocking, so this one is not the iChill one, but the Hercules ZX2 cooler. Pretty cool cooler actually. Um, and it comes with 3D Mark, uh, which is quite cool because unlike when it comes with a game, it actually shows that they're not afraid of showing their true performance. Uh, you get game stream, game words, G-Sync, all the usual stuff you get with the, uh, the 970 and the 980. So inside the fancy looking box there's just a normal plain brown box. With inside of it you know, another brown box so you get this um, soft foam around the edges, that's pretty cool. We get the installation kit which is you know, just a booklet. Um, warning that the fan might stop when idling, so this is like the, the Strix cards, right? Where everyone just thought, hey, we can do, we can do so, uh, zero RPM and it will work fine. So that's what power supply stuff you need, an installation kit with a driver, but you should uh, download the drivers off of the NVIDIA website, of course. And you also get a 3D Mark key. So that's pretty cool. So let's just look at the card itself. What you also get is an Allen key. So as we can see, dual slot card, we get, you know, six hex screws. I just thought when I bought it that these were decoration thingies. Uh, apparently they're real screws and I'll show you what they do later. Um, the I.O. I.O. we get three display ports, an HDMI and a DVI, du uh, dual link DVI. Pretty weird layout um, because this is a 200 euro card or, you know, that price bracket. And I don't think people in that price bracket have really expensive screens that support display port so if anything I'd just like to see two HDMI's and two DVI's. On the back side we have a six pin for your power, a little wire going to the fans, I would like to see that go behind the plastic. Um, but there's also reinforcement in a, a nice metal bracket which will also cool your, uh, your VRM and some of the memory chips. On the back of the cart we find quite a mess, uh, the PCB itself is only 17 and a half centimeters and it's 23 or more um, the total length so I'd say 20, um, 22 is the minimum because you can actually slide the fans around when you reinstall everything you just have to make sure that these plastic taps don't you know block the power connector so you can make the card a bit shorter you can make it a bit longer depending on what you want really um, also we get these flame like things so these are just for cooling uh, the VRAM uh, we also get, so we can actually see that it's Samsung memory, so we got two chips here and then two chips on the other side. Okay, so each of these things, this is actual metal and then the black inserts are plastic. Okay, so when you've taken all the metal bits off, this, these are then the fans you'll see now. These fans are both connected to a, a single fan connector, so you kind of have to remove the fan connector first. And then you can take these fans off, so they use these metal taps, uh, plastic taps on the, the fan housing. The, way, the reason it's a bit difficult to put them on and take them back off is because there are these metal thingies that, you know, you screw the the shrouds do and they have to go in between and the plastic taps have to go over the metal which you know is pretty difficult um, but then this is what you see so as you can see it's a fairly small heat sink um, it only uses two I think these are four or six millimeter heat pipes all right then guys time for a conclusion and some more thoughts on the Inno 3D Hercules set X2 OC GTX 960 um, Overall thoughts, very, very good. And I'm gonna start off with the very, very goods here. Actually, I'm gonna start off with the awards. I'll pop an award, a gold award right there. Oh, 
right here because it is a really really cool car. I'm going to tell you guys why. It has uh, twin fans on it, but the fans are so easy to remove. It's just six hex screws. You can just click them off, unplug the power thing, and you have complete access to the heatsink, so you can easily clean it. If you want to modify your card, it's very easy to just paint the metal bits. Um, that should not really be hard for anyone. Um, it has a metal, you know, reinforcement bracing thing all around it, which is also good for cooling the memory and well, all that sort of stuff. It, it just runs very, very good, uh, cool. I never heard the card spinning up. Uh, you know, the 5 volt fans in my system were actually louder than this graphics card. So that's very, it's very silent, very cool, never went over 67 degrees stock and 69 with the overclock on it. So great cooler on this thing. And uh, well, there's also a little negative I'm going to talk about. It. The back is a complete mess, so I would really like a back plate on this thing because it is a bit of a mess here. And let's face it, the car is going to be installed this way in your system, so you're only going to see ugliness. Not the really nice cooler which you'll probably paint. Um, so, it is a great card, uh, not loud, no coil line, and it's a great overclocker, despite, you know, NVIDIA really limiting this thing. So, let's go over our um, benchmark scores. So, Project Cars, this is a game still in development, so, you know, scores may vary a bit. Well, 63 FPS, which is, you know, better than an R9290. Battlefield 4, we were getting 53 FPS, so again, very good scores. Assassin's Creed Black Flag, a uh, bit of an older game now, um, 36.4, that's everything maxed out at 80p. Now, Crisis 3, actually that was a weird one, because in Crisis 3 the card scored less than the previous, the, uh, the GTX 760. Far Cry 3, uh, 43 FPS, and then Firestrike, so 3D Mark Firestrike, the benchmark that actually comes with this card, so that's very cool that it comes with that. Um, 6,353 points, very good. In, and then in the, the Ultra version, which is the 4K version, that kind of shows that the chip isn't quite powerful enough to run 4K. The memory isn't quite there as well for 4K stuff. But we did get 1,229 with stock. We were able to overclock that to 1,388. Very, very respectable scores, especially when we compare it to the 760, which only scores about half of that. So. Yeah, moving on to Unigen Heaven, massive overclock here. So the stock score was 1068 and we were able to get up to 1264, which is, you know, that's a very nice 20% increase in performance just by messing around with some sliders. Temperatures during all this overclocking, again, very, very cool. Never went over 69 degrees and the best part of all is that it never really made any noise. Now, I think we should be able to get much, much higher overclocking performance out of this. But the big issue with this card is the fact that we could only add 7% extra power in the uh, in MSI Afterburner. But despite that, I was able to overclock it well over, um, you know, base clock. So we got 1501 megahertz on the core, which is massive, and a whopping 8.4 gigahertz on the on the memory, which. That's the highest I've ever done. You can see it in the graphs. It's way higher than anything I ever did before. So, with all that sort of stuff in mind, I already gave it the Gold Award, which is still there. Um, it's a great card. Uh, performs very well. It's only 200 euros. Looks good. Easy to modify. And um, yeah, guys, if you like the video, press the like button. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button. Uh, you can leave a comment. You can share this video with your friends so they can watch it. I guess that's what videos are for. And thank you all very, very much for watching.